Hey everybody, welcome back to Whistle Thicket. Tom here. So we had a pretty fun weekend. Roan and I went rafting with some good friends of ours on the Nantahala, which is a great family-friendly whitewater river in western North Carolina. So if you get a chance, go ahead and check out the Nantahala. Great place to go. I am going to talk about some plants that I save seeds from. I am not an expert seed saver, but I do know a little bit. So there's a couple plants I am definitely saving seeds from. I'm going to show you those and how I save those seeds. The first seed I'm saving are from my sunflower seeds. Oh, there's our baby goat, Leo. Hey, Leo. How's it going, bud? So the first seed that I save are sunflower seeds. So sunflowers can cross-pollinate with different varieties. That's what you need to know about saving seeds is that you want to minimize cross-pollination if you want a true variety. But with sunflowers, I'm not eating the sunflowers. I do use the sunflowers a little bit for chicken feed, for wildlife, and for goat treats. But I am not harvesting the sunflowers currently for a food source for myself. They're mainly for show because I like flowers. So I am not too worried about any cross-pollination on my sunflowers because, hey, if I make a new variety, that to me is cool. But I do try to plant my sunflower varieties away from each other and that will minimize any cross-pollination. So let's go ahead and harvest our sunflower heads. It's really easy. All I do, I twist off the heads and I put them in a brown paper bag and then I put them in a dark, dry area and the seeds will fall off of the sunflower heads and a lot of my sunflower heads are missing a lot of seeds because wildlife, chickens, the goats have eaten some of them. But I can still harvest a decent amount of wild of sunflower seeds. Um, so let's go ahead and harvest those seeds. <laughs> We even have a few sunflowers that I planted a little bit later in the season that are just now blooming. It's almost October. So it's nice to have a staggered planting for your sunflowers so that you get to enjoy them more. I will be harvesting these seeds as soon as the heads dry out. But I have had a lot of success with sunflowers. I harvested the same plants for about five years until we moved to the farm. Then I kind of lost my seeds in the moving process. But sunflowers are a great plant where you only have to order a pack of seeds. A single flower head can have anywhere from 50 to several hundred seeds. So really, you just need to buy sunflowers once and if you can manage those seeds, you never have to buy sunflowers again unless you want a new variety, which, which I probably will because I like a lot of different flowers. I am going to show you another easy to harvest seed and that are or is pole beans. So we have already harvested our pole beans and we've canned I think about 16 jars of Nana's beans. So these are beans from Amy's grandmother, Rowan's great grandmother. We harvested these with um, Yaya, which is Amy's mom. Um, but this is a second harvest. These beans are dying back, as you can see. They don't look that great, but there's a total second harvest here, which is where we are going to save our seeds. So beans are great because pole beans are self-pollinating, which means they have male and female flowers on the same plant. So they actually do not need wind or insects to harvest or to pollinate them. 
So the chances of cross-pollination are really, really low for pole beans. For runner beans, that's a different story, but I don't grow runner beans. We grow one type of beans here at our homestead, and that's Nana's beans. So as long as you're only growing one variety of bean, you don't really need to worry about cross-pollination. Saving these seeds are simple. I'm going to harvest them, and then we are going to put them on a paper towel in the sunlight inside our house by a window, let them dry out for about a week and a half, then we will shell the pods and we will have our dried seeds for next year. Um, the seeds we use from Nana had been on the shelf for about seven years and they were still viable. So these have a pretty decent seed um, life on the shelf and these are just amazing beans. So again, if you have pole beans are self-pollinating so you have a lot slimmer chance of cross-pollination happening with your beans and again if you want to eliminate that only grow one variety of beans or really really space them out so let's harvest our beans I'm going to show you another easy to harvest seed saving crop and it's right here okra so okra is really easy to save you just pluck an okra you let them grow kind of longer even a little bit longer than most people would eat them so the seeds have time to mature and to fully develop and then you just let these babies air dry put them in a paper bag that's what I do this is important though okra can cross pollinate with other forms of okra with other okra varieties but unless you're crazy about okra you probably in your home garden are probably only growing one variety at a time at least I am I love okra um, but I only grow one variety every year and I save the seed. So okra is super easy to save seeds from. So, so far we got the sunflowers, which is pretty obvious. You plant one sunflower, you can get hundreds of seeds from one plant, and then you never have to buy sunflowers again. Um, we got the okra we talked about, and also pole beans. Um, pole beans, like I said, are self-pollinating very low chance that they will cross pollinate with other bean varieties so pole beans are a safe bet to save seeds from and I'm going to show you one more bonus plant it's not a vegetable it's a flower but it's right here let's see if I can show it to you this is a calla lily I think they are just a beautiful beautiful plant um, they're gorgeous they're kind of like um, a funneled trumpet looking flowers, how I would describe them. So the flowers turn into the seed pods, and I bet I probably have at least 20 seeds in this one flower head. So again, for the calla lily, I just harvest the heads, I air dry them, and I will plant these babies in the spring. So the number one important tip for seed saving is keep stuff dry if you don't keep your seeds dry then they will germinate they can get moldy um, your seeds really shouldn't smell if they're smelling funky they probably got wet so hopefully this helps you out on your seed saving journey again I'm not a seed saving expert I'm just learning like everybody else out there but I know at least I can start with these four plants 
and year after year I'm gonna find which plants I am able to save seed from. Um, if you like our videos, please subscribe, like, comment. If there's a plant that you save seeds from every year, we would love to hear about it. So until next time, keep on homesteading and we will see you in the future.